Very good afternoon to everyone. Today we have with us Dr. Neeraj Goyal. Dr. Neeraj Goyal has done his MS from PGI Chandigarh and is senior consultant urology and kidney transplant surgeon. Dr. Neeraj Goyal has rich experience in the field of urooncology and carries out the treatments with utmost precision and efficiency, ensuring that patients are in safe hands. A very warm welcome to you, sir. And over to you for a short introduction of yourself. Myself is Dr. Neeraj. I'm a consultant urologist and a kidney transplant surgeon at Alchemist Hospital, Panchkula, Chandigarh. So thank you so much, Forbes, for giving me this opportunity. Today, we are going to talk about prostate cancer. It's a very common cancer. In fact, it's the most common, we can say, non-cutaneous cancer among men. And so we are going to talk about this cancer today. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. So, sir, as we go ahead with the question answer session now, so we all know that the prostate is a small walnut shaped gland in the males. So can you just tell us something as to how the cancer develops in the prostate? Yes, Dr. Gulshan. Actually, prostate, uh, it's a very small gland uh, which sits in the pelvis uh, of males. It's only found in males. Uh, it's not there in among females or intersex people. So it's just a gland which is exclusive, or I can say which defines the maleness of we call what is cancer actually. So cancer is uncontrolled proliferation of any cells. So similarly in prostate cancer, when there is uncontrolled proliferation of the prostate gland cells, then we call it as cancer. Cancer is, prostate cancer is like a, it's, it's kind of a disease spectrum in itself. It has got a wide variation among presentation. And uh, similarly, we, we are going to discuss today about the treatment options and everything. So when the prostate, the cells among the prostate gland gets cancerous, they start growing or they start proliferating in an uncontrolled way. Okay. So when, then we call it as a cancerous growth. So what are the chances of Indian men getting prostate cancer? Are they more prone to it or something like that? Answer your question in the other way. Traditionally, what prostate cancer was taken as a disease of American black population. So whatever data, whatever research, whatever treatment options, so everything we have today that originated actually from American blacks. It was considered to be a disease of American blacks. And that is the race which is affected most by the prostate cancer. So this is up to the tune that you can imagine that one in eight people out of American black is going to have a prostate cancer in their lifetime. So basically this was disease of those people. Now coming to the Indian scenario, what I can say or what we can talk is that among Indian population, the prostate cancer is on the rise. There are various factors. Actually, it's the rising awareness about the disease. So people are being diagnosed with the prostate cancer and then increasing life expectancy of the population. So that is the biggest factor. So prostate cancer was one disease which is directly proportional to the age. So as we are going to age, the probability or the possibility of having a prostate cancer is directly proportional to the Talking that way, your question was that who are prone? No one on this earth who is a normal male is immune to prostate cancer. Anyone, any normal male is prone to develop prostate cancer. Okay. But yeah, definitely American blacks are at the highest uh, proneness. But sir, are there any particular risk factors? I mean, although all men are equally prone to uh, develop prostate cancer, but are there any risk factors uh, which uh, are present in a few men which make them, they have more chances of developing prostate cancer? Yes, definitely. As I just pointed out, the first, the most important factor is the racial factor. Racial factor. Right. So, so they, yeah, uh, that I have already pointed out. Then coming to the next factor is the genetic factors. As you must have heard that the majority of the cancers are caused by the genetic abnormalities, we can say, right. or abbreviations. So there are certain 
modifications in our genetic framework okay. or there are certain genetic abnormalities we can say so that is the most important factor like uh, you must have heard of few celebrities having breast cancers or having a history of breast cancer ovarian cancer endometrial cancers there you must have heard of braca braca modifications or braca gene abnormalities similarly such such genetic factors are the most important factors that play a role in the development of prostate cancer so there are certain families okay. who are more prone to develop prostate cancer so how to talk about that or how to discuss for a general population if you have a family history of prostate cancer mm-hmm. or any other prostate cancer which are known to have such modifications like just one example braca variation so you are more prone to develop prostate cancer so in direct family members like parents brothers siblings they have a prostate cancer so they are more likely to have prostate cancer these are non modifiable factors one is racial factor the second is genetic, genetic factors and the third is familial or hereditary factors if you have a family history apart from that there are certain other factors like smoking we say play a very important role in majority of the cancers of the body so smoking obesity dietary factors these are the factors which have some contribution to the prostate cancer but the direct relation actually has not been well established like in other cancers like uh, ca lung jo hamare lungs ka cancer hai or or our cheek cancers or jo facio maxillary cancers hain so the direct relation has not been established but smoking obesity dietary factors they definitely play a significant role and uh, they just not increase the incidence of cancer but the cancer found in these people are likely to be more aggressive that is well so what symptoms does the patient usually present with like they say frequent urge to urinate is one of the symptoms that the patient uh, usually presents to the doctor what other symptoms does a patient present with prostate cancer doesn't have any specific symptoms you just uh, like uh, specified frequent urge to urinate even this is not a specific symptom for prostate cancer in the early stage prostate cancer doesn't have a specific symptoms so uh, i'll go back to the uh, beginning so what is a prostate it's a normal gland as we uh, all know and after the age of 50 years it's a part of our aging process it starts mm-hmm. increasing in size right so when it increases in size it causes obstruction to the flow of urine or irritation to the flow of urine so that is how we get two types of symptoms one is obstructive symptoms that is obstruction to the flow of urine that we we do not void properly or there is a persistent urge to void or after urination we get a sensation that we i need to void more or like urgency so these are irritative symptoms these are two types of symptoms so they are basically because of the enlargement of the prostate of the prostate of the prostate which starts happening after 50 years of age so almost entire population male population will be affected by some sort of prostate symptoms after the age of 50 years but all the symptoms are not because of the prostate cancer so few of these men may be harboring a prostate cancer portion among that normal prostate so prostate cancer in itself doesn't have any specific symptoms okay. it's just the prostate symptoms mm-hmm. prostate enlargement symptoms are usually there prostate cancer has its own specific symptoms when it is there on the advanced stage like a bone pain loss of appetite fall of hemoglobin but these are the symptoms of very advanced prostate cancer when it's metastatic to other affecting other parts of body like bones huh? so then it's these are the specific symptoms of prostate cancer early prostate cancer doesn't have any specific symptoms these days the majority of the prostate cancer are being diagnosed with the prostate cancer screening program yes a lot of screening tests have come up like we've all heard about the psa test yeah so uh, so for our audience can you please describe the psa test a little actually psa is a very small molecule 
it's only found in male population because it's produced by prostate gland so psa is prostate specific antigen so it's exclusively manufactured by prostate gland in body so it is only found in male population so what is the relation of psa to prostate cancer so it's like that that a uh, uh, abnormal prostate produces more psa this can be because of prostate cancer prostate infections or sometimes even just the benign enlargement of prostate so what has been scientifically proven that the malignant prostates or cancerous prostates they comparatively produces more psa what i will not go much deep into the science of the psa what we can understand for a layman that a cancerous prostate produces more psa as compared to other prostates so as the psa level rises in our report what we see if the psa level is high the probability of having a prostate cancer or harboring a cancerous nodule in the prostate gland is higher but it's not a diagnostic test it's not that the if psa is high that we we just lose a we hope oh i am having a prostate cancer no it's not a diagnostic test it's just a screening test and it tells us the probability of prostate cancer the higher the value higher the probability higher are the chances of higher the chances of having a prostate cancer so sir then are there any other blood tests or radiological investigations for the diagnosis of prostate cancer actually we were discussing two things one is screening in right. a, a normal indian population uh, as we are discussing there are just many more tests which were initially at experimental levels but now they are being used routinely in western countries and america Okay. but as of we talk about india in india the screening is done only with the psa testing and digital rectal examination means clinical examination by a urologist so we screen the population with these two tests for a normal population if somebody is having a high probability of prostate cancer like a very strong family history or something like that then the things vary for such pe- people but for general population we do clinical examination we do psa screening and it's combination of both so if we found find abnormal psa values or on clinical examination the prostate gland looks to be abnormal then we go for further testing in the form of like mri or prostate biopsy if indicated those are the diagnostic tests those are the confirmatory test psa is just a screening test And so, what are the different treatment modalities available for this cancer, sir? So, actually, prostate. I just uh, in the beginning of our conversation, I just was telling that prostate cancer. It's a, it's a huge disease complex in itself. It's a there is a wide variation. It's a broad spectrum of disease. A single treatment option. I cannot say that it's a blanket therapy available for the entire population. The treatment of prostate cancer. depends on many factors many 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 factors the most important thing is like uh, the age of the patient when he is being diagnosed with the prostate cancer okay so in the initial discussion we were discussing that the prostate cancer incidence you have that is directly proportional to the age of if we discuss about like uh, elderly population say more than 80 years so many many people are going to have prostate cancer in their or like cancerous foci in their prostate everyone with the prostate cancer is not requiring the treatment right so the the first the and the foremost the most important factor that will decide the treatment is the age of the person when he is diagnosed with the prostate cancer his overall performance status performance status we can say about his general health and expected what is his residual life like life expectancy so these are the this is the most important factor and the second is the stage of the cancer these are the two most important factors that decide the treatment of prostate. so if we discuss about like a person coming in his uh, 50s or 60s and he is diagnosed with a localized prostate cancer 
by localized i mean okay i'll first tell you that prostate cancer can be broadly divided into three categories the first is the localized prostate cancer means the cancer is just localized within the prostate gland right so it's it's completely localized on our entire evaluation all the tests that we do psa testing biopsy then mri pet ct scan these are the different modalities from the all the modalities from the summation of all the modalities we reach at a conclusion that yes this is a localized prostate cancer means there is no evidence of any cancer spread out of the prostate gland this is the category 1 then category 2 is locally advanced means the prostate cancer has gone out of the prostate gland but is in the vicinity of the so there are like the first in, first location for metastasis is like lymph nodes or if the prostate has just spread beyond its confines like seminal vesicles or urinary bladder then we call it as a locally advanced prostate cancer the third category is metastatic prostate cancer when it has gone away from the prostate gland like bones or like liver or uh, lungs or anywhere else so these are the three broad categories so first we will discuss about the localized prostate cancer so a person coming to my clinic is in his like 60s and he's well preserved so we can say okay, yes the life expectancy is at least 5 to 10 years and he comes with a localized prostate cancer so the best treatment option available is the surgery okay so by means of surgery the cancer is we can see ke jad se mita sakte hain isko so so the primary treatment is the surgery for patients with localized prostate cancer and there are certain selected patients who are not willing for surgery who don't want to go for surgery or there are certain factors that makes him unfit for surgery they can be taken for curative radiotherapy also so radiotherapy stands number 2 in the queue these are the two modalities for localized prostate cancer and if we talk about uh, locally advanced prostate cancer usually such patients require multi modality means combination treatment there we have to decide we have to individualize the treatment sometimes they require surgery plus radiotherapy or sometimes they require like surgery plus hormone treatment or sometimes they require radiation therapy plus hormone treatment or or we have to individualize the treatment the sequence varies then for first what will come first what will come afterwards so and uh, if we discuss about the metastatic prostate cancer then it's totally altogether a different thing they again require a multimodality treatment majority of the patients will require some sort of systemic treatment systemic means we can say that the treatment that is going to act on the entire body of the patient right. so they require hormone treatment okay I, i'll tell you one more thing what is hormone treatment hormone treatment we basically discuss among prostate cancer because this prostate gland is dependent on our uh, testosterone jo hamare androgens hote hain they are dependent on testosterone for their growth so this is the single largest factor which is responsible for the growth of prostate growth cancer of the prostate. so um, when we discuss about the treatment options so this treatment comes very high in the order when we cut down the to testosterone hormone supply to the prostate gland so that to some extent uh, controls the growth of prostate cancer so now coming back to the metastatic prostate cancer so it's a multi modality treatment that usually involves hormone treatment chemotherapy uh, this is for the systemic control like the prostate cancer cells which have already got disseminated which are sitting somewhere else in the body out of the prostate gland plus surgery or radiotherapy that may be required for certain patients for local control of this so this is how we can summarize the yeah. prostate cancer so what are the chances of survival in patients of prostate cancer so let me say with confidence that the survival is very good in prostate cancer uh, means prostate cancer Uh, the first depends on the normal behavior of the prostate cancers there are certain cancers who we can say is low grade or like low risk and medium risk prostate cancers in its own they are not very aggressive by their behavior they are not very aggressive 
as far as their spread is concerned as far as their growth is concerned and they respond very well to the treatment and there are certain cancers who are highly aggressive then we call them as high risk prostate cancer or even very high risk prostate cancers so by their nature they are very aggressive if we talk about the the people who have a low or moderate risk prostate cancers they if treated appropriately they do very well they almost lived their normal life expectancy like 15 years 20 years whatever is their life remaining life they usually live to their normal life but the people who are with the aggressive disease they can also live at least 10 years in the current era because the treatment varieties are very effective so we have so many treatment options for patients even with the metastatic disease there are certain people who are being diagnosed with a metastatic disease on the the first go they are coming they have a metastatic disease the uh, like it has already spread to the bones to the spine or even some other organs so even for such patients the survival is pretty good so it is not as bad as certain other cancers the in cancers. the body so if treated appropriately majority of the patients have a very good quality of life number 1 and a very good life expectancy one thing is one uh, because we have got a lot of research among prostate cancer in last 15 to 20 years we have so many options we start with the surgery then we is a radiotherapy then is like hormone treatment then is chemotherapy then there are multiple options among chemotherapy and then chemotherapy after that we have targeted therapies then we have immunotherapies so uh, so the survival if we say is very good is this is one of the cancers which can almost always be treated well for every patient last but not the least sir i thank you for sparing your valuable time it has indeed been a very very informative session and i think our audience will really really um, benefit a lot from this thank Once you again, so much sir, thank you so much yeah. for sparing your time and uh, being on the forbes platform for us thank you so much thank dr you. gulshan